Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers, and I'm looking today at an exciting book from Law Society Publishing. It's one I'm interested in because I'm very interested in planning matters and the environment generally as a, an ex-counsellor, the person who's practised at that uh, bar. This is a book called Environmental Information Regulations, a practical guide. Uh, it's now part of the legal um, proceeding, uh, legal handbooks from Law Society Publishing, and it's written by Susan Wolf. It's this book here. You can see the front of it. The back of it um, shows you some of the detail that's contained in it, covering things like the Aarhus Convention and also the EU Council Directives. Uh, there is, in fact, a short index at the back. There is a very short appendix as well, which is co actually covers the regulations themselves, the environmental information regulations themselves. The book is about um, 250 pages long. That's, that's the sort of front, uh, the actual contents. And you've also got a very useful um, forward from Richard Thomas, CBE, who's the uh, uh, information commissioner. Um, the book itself is, is a structured book in many ways. There are rather good practical examples given of some of the problems you might come up against with the regulations. And, of course, you've got the nice paragraph numbering at the sides. We've given it a title on the web, a, a detailed review, Disclosure or Non-Disclosure, Read This Authoritative Guide to the Environmental Information Regulations. And, as I said, the Information Commissioner, Mr Thomas, provides the foreword to Wolf's book, and it gives you a good idea of the book's authority when he says, because it's that it's got a great deal of value, reliability, and readability, and he remarks quite rightly that the book is clearly written and accessible to both beginners and experienced information practitioners, because we're very much in the information world today. We have new law reports and a whole range of other things which are beginning to take very much uh, substantial shape as a new, what I would describe as a new substantive law area, which has emerged with all sorts of new changes in this part of the uh, 21st century. The book actually delves into the background and purpose of the regulations, which I think is helpful, it discusses their practical aspects. It provides an analysis of the relationship between the regulations and related legislation, including the Freedom of Information Act itself, which of course is highly important. And interestingly, it came into effect on the same day as the regulations. It's not surprising, therefore, then, that the environmental information regulations have possibly languished somewhat in the shadow of the Freedom of Information Act itself. Therefore, it, obviously, this is an important contribution to what we have today. So let me conclude by saying that as you would also expect, this invaluable work of reference provides all the relevant tables of cases, statutes and statutory instruments. And that's, that's actually quite an important factor in the contents themselves, as well as the table of European and international legislation. As I said, the appendix itself has the regulations and a boon, I think, to information rights practitioners is what this book is. It will also aid those, I think, in the public authorities area who must make informa uh, informed decisions regarding disclosure or non-disclosure of environmental uh, information. The book is up to date as at the autumn, that's September 2011, and I'm recording this just a little bit later on. I'm delighted with it. Um, it's a tricky issue about disclosure and non-disclosure. I hope this goes some way to help you make a decision about what you think you might be able to get when you're looking for information. Thank you very much to all concerned, and especially to uh, Susan uh, uh, Wolf for writing it. Thank you. Bye-bye.